here at Maryland Welding Technology, and I've had this question for years about the quality of the weld metal pr produced by the various flux core wires. I've been used, forced to use these in the sheet metal industry over the years with varying results. Some producing very brittle metal that just broke at the slightest flex, to metals that have uh, performed just as well as any sticker MIG that I've used. So I decided today to take a sampling of all the various uh, flux core wires that I could find and submit them to destructive testing. I also have two controls. One is a uh, 70, it's a gas shielded MIG, which with, due to the higher deposition rate, I decided to produce a second control, which is a gas shielded MIG, that I reduced the section down to a comparable section to the flux core samples that I've made. So that way it should be a more comparable result. And again, a lot of people, since they use the Harbor Freight machines, I chose, I bought this uh, for $130 on Black Friday. This was used to weld the Fab Shield, the Inatub, Lincoln, and Harbor Freight coupons. Um, the Victory and the controls were done using a power mig at the settings for 3 16 of an inch on 110. And the, and the Radner was done with a Hobart handler at work. That's the wire we use where I work at. And uh, with, again, a 110 machine. So all of these were identically prepared, identically welded, three passes, a root pass and two passes over top, capping them to give me a decent section of weld metal to break. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and we'll proceed to the breaking of the coupons. Okay, this is the first control. This was welded three passes with the uh, gas, you know, gas metal arc welding process, which has twice the metal of the uh, flux core samples, but I'm going to use this as the first control. So we're going to see what this breaks at. See, I can't really see the needle, but you can, so let's see. Okay, well that's, okay, it's good and stop. That's not Okay, obviously that one's not cooperating because it doesn't want to break, so I had to make a little adjustment. Let me see if I can. Well, I know, I think I. I yielded. Without the reduced section, it is pretty heavy duty. I, you saw the needle, I didn't, so I'll uh, have to let you uh, see what you think about that. Here is the reduced section control, which has about the same section of weld metal as the flux core specimens. All right, here we go. Again, let's see, let you see the needle there, which I can't see at this given moment. And we're going, we're going, we're going, and we are breaking. The metal is very ductile. And again, it took a full bend, and it didn't break. So again, that is gas metal, gas shielded, regular met MIG welding. Again, you can see there clearly, nicely penetrated, nicely bent, no breakage. Okay, good. All right, this is the Harbor Freight the Harbor Freight uh, sample. You notice it's got a little bit of ribbage to it, which isn't necessarily bad. A little bit of spatter to it. I consider this the least aesthetic of the welds, even though it could be just a sim. Let's find out. So again, this is like you know the, what the what most people would consider the garbage of wires, just because it's Harbor Freight. But you just never know with these things. So again, let's go ahead and see what the gauge has to say about it. And this seems to be yielding and duct you know, fairly ductile, bent the angle to an extent. Now it is yielding considerably quicker. I wouldn't consider it brittle. It has some ductility to it. Again, the weld did not fail. It has seemed to have penetrated adequately. Okay. Now this is the Lincoln. Again, Lincoln's been one of my standbys for years. Um, you notice there's some spatter, you know, a little bit of ribbage to the weld, but nothing, uh, you know, bad, nothing really bad that a grinder wouldn't fix. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how it bends. Okay. Wow, that did a uh, barely yield it at all, bent the uh, angle over completely without failure. That's fairly impressive.
impressive. Again, I've always had good results with the Lincoln welds, and again, that weld seemed to hold pretty solidly. Okay, now this is in a tube. Uh, it's a European wire that I've read things, some good things about. I ordered a two pound of it to put in my Harbor Freight welder, and I ran three passes on this, and I thought I would try to see how this wire held up as well compared to the other wires. So let's go ahead and try that one. Oh, thank you very much. Oops. <laughs> okay, very good. Here we go. So far we're looking pretty good. It seems to be yielding. The angle is yielding, not the weld metal whatsoever. And again, taking this all the way over and very impressive result because there seemed to be no yield in that weld whatsoever. I mean, that, that is probably the most impressive result I've seen so far. Alright, now this is the Victory Wire. It's a brand that I've seen around here and there. I picked up a spool of it. Since we had it at the school, I went ahead and ran it in our power MIG. I plugged it into, you know, 110. I ran it on the uh, Lincoln Machines programming for the material thickness. So, so let's go ahead and break that one. See how that one does. Something is going and it seems to be the angle. Again, that's a very impressive result. <clears throat> I do not see any yield whatsoever in that. Just ever so slight, but again, the weld seems to have held completely. No breakage, no bending. I mean, that's now here's Radner. It's another brand that I'm not particularly familiar with. They gave it to me to use at work, so I decided I've been using it. So far, I haven't had any real problems with it. I, like I said, I thought I would add it to this test just to see how it performs. Here we go. I think we'll say that's a good weld. Let me put my socket back on and see what I can do with the rest of it. Okay, back to the Radner here now that i got everything back together and I'm going to give it the full bend till I'm bottomed out, which I am. Wow, again, pretty impressive. Like I said, that actually did better than the reduced section. All of these so far have done better than the reduced section control of the MIG. Alright, now we're here to my, back to my old standby, Fab Shield. It's made by Hobart. I've been using this stuff for pushing 30 years, and I've always been happy with every weld that I've made with it. I've Honestly, it's just been my go-to. It's like sometimes I've, I've been on jobs, and if they gave me anything other than Fab Shield, I threw it in the dumpster and told them to get me Fab Shield. So this is the Fab Shield. Let's see how my go-to stands up to the test. Here we go. Uh-oh, Chongo. Guess I'll be rethinking that in the future, obviously, because, wow, that was, that was a shock to me, because, again, this has always been my standby wire, and, wow. It, it, it seemed to yield. It's not, it didn't just snap like brittle metal. It did open up pretty good. You can see there's penetration in there and all that. It, it yielded a little bit before it gave, but... Wow, okay, I guess, my, I guess my old standby will not be my standby anymore. I learned something today that I actually had no clue was going to happen. I'm surprised. So, okay, very good. So I'm hoping you all learned something as well. Because you know, all these people that are using these products at home on their motorcycle frames, their cars, and other things that they weld, it's important to know what's, if your welds are going to hold up or not. So... Thanks for watching this, and hopefully you'll follow Maryland Weld Tech, and I'll have more videos for you coming up soon.